forward to the cloud. All right, well, I think for the sake of time, we, uh, we will get started. Thank you all again for coming on and a special thanks to Betsy Payne for, for being our speaker today. So I have to say when I first get it, when I first met Betsy and I started getting emails um, from her, the email said one name and she signed it something different. Um, so I was thoroughly confused for the first few emails that, that we corresponded, but Betsy Payne, um, oh, here she is. Also, uh, Susan Payne, maybe you can tell us where the Betsy came from, but was born and raised in Puerto Rico, where she spent uh, a number of hours, uh, as she puts it herself, by the sea, which, all, which led to her love of the ocean and led her to study marine biology at the University of Florida, where she got her Bachelor of Science in 1984. She then returned to Puerto Rico and worked with the University of Puerto Rico Medical Sciences campuses. Institute of Neurobiology as a biologist. Um, she does touch on some of her uh, personal life in her bio as well, which I will leave to her if she wants to cover. But currently, I um, mean, this is how I met Betsy. Uh, she is now the manager of the Philadelphia Education Fund and the Philadelphia STEM ecosystem, where she joined that team last year. And she's been a wonderful, wonderful addition to to Thank the you. folks at the, uh, at the Ed Fund and in the STEM <laughs> ecosystem. So Betsy, we are thankful that, that, that you are here, not only here in Philadelphia to help lead the ship um, with those two groups, but also here speaking with us today. So I'm gonna turn it over to you and uh, I will monitor the chat box. I will monitor the admit, um, the waiting room. You just need to give your talk. And if there's any questions that pop up, I will, I'll say them. Okay, well, just to start, well, welcome everybody. Thank you for having me. Thanks, David, for saying all those nice things. And I'm gonna actually I start by asking the uh, ladies here to put on the chat, do you have any idea what you wanna be when you grow up? And if so, what? And if not, say, no idea, that's okay. Just write two, you know, two words. Um, do you have any idea what you wanna be in? What do you think your next steps? From what I understand, you are seniors in a school in New Jersey, correct? And just so you know, I am in New Jersey coming to you live from New Jersey, the great town of Sicklerville. And if you don't know where that is, do you know exit seven on your way down to um, when it takes 42, one turns into the Atlantic City Expressway, that's where I'm, I'm at. So I see a nurse's assistant, teacher or vet, operating room nurse, school teacher, trauma nurse. Nah, there's some really nice things here and all um, great places to go. So I congratulate you. And I might not be able to change your mind today, but I just wanna expand the possibilities and show us something. I, as I told David many, many, many times, I'm not in the health field. Okay. I'm a marine biologist by education. Mind you, I'm a, now an informal educator because life kind of took me that way. But let me tell you that even saying that, that I'm a marine biologist, I started in mechanical engineering and realized that, oh, with a double major in physics, by the way, which I realized that even though I liked, it was not my passion. My passion was the ocean. As David mentioned, I am from Puerto Rico, born and raised. My children are born and raised in Puerto Rico. They came here as tweens and teenagers type thing. And we've been here for a long time. But um, the beach is my, my haven, my safe haven and specifically tropical ones. This cold stuff at the shore here is, but the sand is there, so that's good. So anyway, I'm not in the health field, but I did have some thoughts and and about how to how to navigate a little bit, you know, about how did I get here? I called my talk, how did I get here? And I do have some slides that I'm gonna share and it's a lot of pictures and I'll go in and out of them. So let me see if I got this right, share, let's see. Can you see that first slide? Yeah, yep, we're good. Okay, let me see if I can show this this way. 
Okay, anyway, so how did I get here? How did I get at this point in my life? I must tell you two things that is really important to know. I have had some, um, I've had some privileges in my life. And one of them I think is living in Puerto Rico. You know? But we had a boat. We were able to really enjoy the ocean. So I have that privilege of having been able to be um, there. The other thing that I've had a, a really, and, and this is one of the really important things that you should do and know about is that I've had a lot of people that are very positive around me. My family and friends and an extended group of friends were always very positive. They never put me down. So that is something important that you as a, not even a student, an adult, anybody, make sure that you surround yourself by people that, that will help you up, not put you down. So those are two things that I, I have that is really important. So I'm gonna give you like a little highlight of what I'm gonna say and then show you a bunch of pictures and things, okay? This is how I got here or, you know, I learned and some of these I learned after the fact, right? Nothing I learned that you learned today is wasted, okay? Nothing, nothing. And that, you know, even calcul calculus is one in there that I'm not 100% sure, but it's, Everything you learn, you're gonna use at some point, I assure you. You have to work hard. That's, that's takes, but don't forget you have a personal life, you have family, you have other things, but it takes hard work. Nothing is given to you, you know? Take every opportunity given to you. And this is a perfect example. This, you're here at this class, you're listening to other people, but things that show up, they give you an opportunity to travel. They give you an opportunity to take an internship, a volunteer job, take advantage of it. It's gonna help you along the way. Speak up if you want something. And I'm not saying being rude and, and pushy uh, and we all have our own way of talking to people, but if you want something or you like something, let them know. Again, and I'm gonna show you how these things can work. Use what you already have to get ahead. And by that mean, by that I mean, you might have a passion, you might have something that you really like, you might have something you didn't even know was important and all of a sudden it becomes something that you can build on. And again, I'm gonna show you what's that. Obviously be willing to try new things, be adventurous. You never know where it's gonna lead you and get out of your comfort zone. Sometimes it's like you mentioned, uh, a nurse or a teacher, veterinarian, but maybe they say, well, we need to be, you know, something else. We have this job in another country that might have not to do with what it is, but a little bit attached to it. Go for it, be adventurous, get out of your comfort zone. It, it's important, it's important that, you know, if it's just too easy and you're always doing the same thing, maybe it's time to get something out. And it's uncomfortable when change is awesome. It's very uncomfortable, but it can be a really good stepping tone, stepping stone to go forward. And above all, you have to be responsible. And I'm gonna ask you, what do you mean? What do I mean by responsible? Give me some examples and you can just shout them out if you want to, I have no issue. What do I mean? I mean, responsible is a big word. Give me some examples of that. And I'm gonna tell you, there's no wrong answers, okay? And I'm here as a conversation. No test questions at the end. Anybody? I'll start just to get the conversation going. When I was um, 14 years old, I was out hanging out with my friends and um, we were trying to scare another friend of ours who was walking up a hill on a street and we were just trying to get rocks near him. So we were throwing rocks from a parking lot, probably a couple hundred yards away, not, not that far, maybe a hundred yards away. And I, I remember I threw a rock and as soon as I did, I saw a car come around the bend. It started making its way up the hill and lo and behold, my, my rock hit the car door um, and I took responsibility. And instead of running away with all my other friends, I actually went over and I talked to that person. He never made me pay for the car. 
Um, but it, I got my first job at 14 years old, um, cleaning a cafe after school every day to earn money to pay for what I thought was going to be paying for a car door. And that got me my first job. And I've been hardworking and uh, saving money ever since. So responsibility. Good, good, good. And how are you responsible at school? Give me just, and again, it can be a, a word or two. You know, you don't have to. And if you want to put it on the chat, that's fine. Betsy, are you monitoring the chat or should I uh, chime in when, when, I, when I see something? You know, I can't see small active speaker video. Let me see. I can't see the chat. That's okay. I can, I can share. Morgan and Tori um, said that it, they're responsible by getting their work in on time. Perfect. Be on time, right? And if you can't be on time, whatever reason, you tell your teacher, you tell your person, you know, let them know that you're having for whatever reason. So that's a perfect example. Be on time, you know, uh, do good work. Don't be sloppy, things like that. So responsibility can be many things, but the whole package is being responsible. So um, I said, like David said, I started marine biology, but my first jobs were not very glamorous. You know, we, uh, I uh, started with my parents, they have medical doctors and had an office. So I helped with the filing as a teenager, uh, you know, made a little money. I wasn't making that much money, but it happened. And then I went to college and I worked on a deli. I had never worked in a deli. I think the guys, it was a new store and they were a little on the desperate side. And I spoke two languages, by the way, I, I'm Jobl Español. Así que, um, so I think they took me because of that, but then I had never made, I had never made a deli sandwich in my life. That's not what we eat in Puerto Rico. It doesn't mean that you don't have sandwiches. It just said a deli like the ones in the States is not what we had. So it was like, mm, well, you know, but it's a job, I'll try it. It's good, clean, you know, good money, whatever. And then um, when I moved from one college to go to, um, I started a master's program. Um, which I didn't finish, I'll finish with that, but I was a waitress and I was a waitress at a Chinese restaurant. Yes, I had to even wear the little Chinese, uh, you know, pajama like thing that you wear at the Chinese restaurant. Um, but again, and each of them, I learned to be responsible. I learned a little bit about handling money, about handling food and so forth and so on. So, you know, you try new things, but not very glamorous, but they go from there. When I mention that sometimes what you use to go ahead, once I got, actually, I was in college and um, I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute here. I, right, you're not seeing it now. Okay, so I went to college, I finished in Puerto Rico. I actually started in Georgetown University with a double major in American University in Washington, DC. And it was not for me. I'm coming from the tropics. I came to Washington, DC. It was very different. It was not what I expected. And I was, you know, lonely, my family, all that stuff. So I actually went back to Puerto Rico on my, um, after my, let's see, sophomore year in college. My second semester, I went to Puerto Rico and I said, you know, what I really like is the beach. So why am I not studying marine biology? So I took my uh, classes on biologies, my basic chemistries, because in, in um, engineering, you don't do that. You don't, you don't need to take those classes. So I took those, I reapplied, I went to University of West Florida and I did my um, degree in Bachelor of Science in Marine Biology, which was great. And then I got married and I traveled with my husband for a year, but while I traveled with him, he was working, but I was all by myself. So it's like, and we lived in different states all up and down um, the states, the United States, because he used to work with a shipping company. So wherever the ship had to be, he was on the land side, not on the ship. So I was with him every day, but every day I was alone. So what I decided is, okay, let me take some courses or something like that. And I realized that to take a, I had what was needed to take a license, um, what they call a six pack license for the Coast Guard. 
And the Coast Guard, that means that if you, if you are a captain on a ship, on a, not your private ship, private boat, you need to have a license. A six pack license means that you can take up to six people in a boat of a certain size. So, but for that, you need hours and hours of being on boats and practicing and whatever. And guess what? I've been 10, I am close to like 15 years on boats and doing things on boats. So I took up all my time. I took the license just for fun because I wasn't doing anything. Lo and behold, when I go to North Carolina to University of Wilmington and I was looking for a job, somebody opened a new marina and they needed a captain with a six pack license to carry a ferry from one side of the intercoastal waterway to the other. So basically it was this little ferry because we had, they had a golf course in where the marina was, but no beach. And the other place had beach, but not golf course. So they needed people to move back and forth. So I took that license out of a whim and I was able to use it. So I actually can say that I was a ferry captain and I managed a marina. Mind you, it was small and everything, but I got to do it, which is really, and it was really cool. It's North Carolina, summer, it was beautiful. Then we moved to Puerto Rico because I um, miss being with my husband. I said, you know, we got married. I only see you so often, whatever, while I'm in college. How about, you know, and he said, why don't we move to Puerto Rico? Your parents have invited us, let's go to Puerto Rico. So I said, yes, I'm back in Puerto Rico. So as part of being in Puerto Rico, I started taking some other classes, but I met some people and there was a tour of some areas of Old San Juan. Has anybody heard of Puerto Rico and Old San Juan? I hope of the ladies, you know? So one of the places that we went to, this is Old San Juan. Do you see when I point to it, by the way? We just see a blue screen, Betsy, uh, or at least I oh. always see a blue screen. Okay, let me see. So you see, stop share. I'm gonna share again. Okay. Oh, okay. Let me go back to here. Okay, here we go. Okay, do you see it now? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Can you see my pointer? Yep. Okay. So this is part of old San Juan, which is the uh, San Juan is the capital of Puerto Rico, but old San Juan is a little, it juts out a little bit. And uh, this is the Institute of Neurobiology, which was one of the places that was on tour. And if you see this building right here, because I want to show you the view, by the way, is this. So we went into the Institute as part of this tour, it was my husband and I. And one of the things they do is that they do research and they use animals. Um, and they had some tanks and different things as part of their research. So what turned out to be the director of the place said, oh, did you see our tanks downstairs? And I said, no, I'd love to see them. You know, I'm a marine biologist because, you know, I got to tell everybody how. And he says, really, we're looking for a marine biologist for a job. Would you be interested? I said, yeah, what do I have to do? He says, we'll come back next week and we'll, we'll talk about it. That was Saturday. I was there Monday at nine o'clock in the morning. And I went over and the guy saw me says, oh, you meant it. I said, yeah, I really like this. So we talked, I applied for the job and lo and behold, I got the job. So I was an assistant to the biologist in charge of the animals that were being used. And mind you, they didn't use a lot of big animals. They didn't use mammals except for, um, uh, these small little squirrels, but I wasn't in charge of that. I was in charge of all the tanks. So we, we did have um, some frogs, but they used uh, octopus. And at one point they used sharks. So there was this really big tank, but no longer when I was there. So I got that job and I learned a lot from the job. I was in this beautiful area. And I don't know if you notice here, this green area here, this is one of the, um, Spanish era fort, so that's a 500 year old fort. But here they wanted to do some sort of aquarium and they asked me to start figuring out if this is something that could be done. 
I've never done this again, but it's like, I'm gonna learn in my way. So I did. As part of that, they also asked me to work with them as the photographer for the scientists. Because when you publish, you need to have pictures and things like that. It's a little different than now. We didn't have everything that you have now to be able to do it. But they sent me to take a photo course. And from there, they asked me to um, design a photo lab. And again, have I ever done a photo lab? I said, OK. So I looked it up. I asked for help from some people. I designed it. And I was so lucky they made the photo lab for me. So. Um, Again, I learned all these things by saying, yes, I'll take advantage of, of whatever you offer. Um, and again, if you have questions or you wanna say anything, just let me know and David, just chime in, please. So I also got to do really cool things. This is my mentor, Mackenzie. He was a biologist in charge and we would go look for some of the critters that we were working for. Of course, with all the required permissions from the University of Puerto Rico and the Department of, um, of the Environment in Puerto Rico, so all very good. But again, we would just get like two or three things. It wasn't um, major. But we would go collecting in the beach, but also we would collect uh, shrimp at the rainforest. That's not me in the picture. I actually took this picture, but it was like, what? We have to go where to collect? Yes, let's go. So not only are you working, but you're also being learning new things, you know? To me, it's all a great adventure. From there, um, one of the things they asked us when I was in the Institute of Neurobiology, and they asked my boss, Mackenzie, who later, actually my mentor of a lifetime, um, he passed away recently, but I learned so much from him. Um, they came to him to ask about some exhibits that we needed. They wanted to put in this next place. It's called Las Cabezas de San Juan Nature Reserve, which is the northeasternmost point of Puerto Rico. And it's one of the lighthouses uh, from the Spanish era. And all lighthouses are actually run in Puerto Rico by the Coast Guard, but they were giving up the the building, but the light still worked, okay? So the conservation trust took over the building and they wanted to make these exhibits, which included um, two terrariums and three aquariums. So they asked us for help at the Institute because we had these aquariums there. So we got to go over there. And every time I would go over there, they said, well, if you guys help us, we're gonna give you this this space here to be an office for you guys if you want to. And I kept saying, oh, you mean my office? Oh, I would love this office. <laughs> but you know, you never know what's gonna happen. So lo and behold, I got my office. They actually offered me if I wanted to be the superintendent of the nature reserve at La Cabeza de San Juan, which is, hello, this is the, uh, this is the faro and my office was, you see that window there? but the one in the back, okay? And this is the view from, from the Faro. As part of the Faro, when we were still uh, not still getting the job, they asked us for some information and if we could figure out what kind of tanks that we want, if we wanted to make salt water or if we wanted to have a um, engine that brought up the water, because it's pretty high up here to bring water from down here to here, it requires a lot of work. You have to have an engine, you know, you have to have a motor, you have to have a, where to keep it, where to let it sit, whatever. And um, they asked me if I would make a decision on this. So of course I had to like learn about it. We went to a meeting in New York and I had to present why I would say one thing to the other. And I'm so glad that I really had all my information. I looked it up. And, uh, and again, I had never worked with a motor of bringing up salt water because then it's corrosive, right? It's not just like fresh water and had to convince, but I was prepared, convinced them. And I think that helped when they offered me a job. So I was the superintendent for here. And as part of the superintendent, I uh, helped with running the, 
the place, but one of the things that we had were, um, um, how do you call it, like a boardwalk in the mangrove and we did tours. So I had to take care of people, um, students, adults, all sorts of groups. I had to, I had other people I worked with, of course, I had some interpreters that I had, I think it was six people that worked with me, but I also had to work with maintenance and with the trolley, we had a trolley. So we had to, you know, had a mechanic. So all that type of thing. And then here, that's me. I know there's a lot of pictures of me, but this is what I'm showing you, right? My, <laughs> um, these were press on the day that we had the, the, we were opening to the public. We took them on a tour and I got to do snorkeling with them and show really cool things. So again, I took care of a lot of people there and including some people that used to work at the El Junque. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go back a couple of pictures. Remember that a site I was showing you, you see these mountains here? These are the rainforest in Puerto Rico, El Junque National Forest. And it's a rainforest in Puerto Rico. It's beautiful. We got some people that work there and they were doing a new place called El Portal. This is the newest visitor center that the Forest Service had at the time, right? And they were building it. And some of the people that were in there, the boss, not the boss, but yeah, the interpretive boss came over to El Faro to see what we were doing over there. And apparently something clicked where they asked me to apply for the job of running the interpretive services, which is the people who guide the students, guide visitors, but also that prepare what you're gonna be saying on these things. So yeah. I love El Junque, but it's the beach that's my heart, right? I wanna be at the beach. There's no beach in El Junque, but it's not that far. So I got a little bit of my comfort zone because even though it's not beach, the biology, the environmental issues and things like that, very similar. So it's not completely different, but it's just really not what I had in mind, but it was like, what a great opportunity. When else will I have the opportunity to do a project of this type? So it's like, you know, I'll go ahead and try. So I did and I was lucky and I got the job. So um, as part of that, this is part of the Junke. Um, so, I worked there, my job was for about four years, but for personal reasons, I've been there about three years. And then I realized that the, the position might not have been available a year after, because it was actually for a four year position. So I looked around and I decided that I was gonna try to do some things on my own, but it's not easy to do things on your own, especially, you know, if you don't have, I didn't know what to do, but, I was really lucky because as part of working in the forest, I worked a lot with customer service, which is mean taking care of people, right? Um, how do you make it comfortable for them? Um, how do you talk to people? How do you talk on the phone with people? Because customer service is a lot of things. What is it that you present to them? What kind of paper, what kind of information? Spanish and English, it is all bilingual over there. So I had some things that I was always uh, working on. So because of these things, I was able to put out my name out there and I did three major things while I was on my own, okay? Um, remember the photo, the lighthouse? The Conservation Trust um, was, they were gonna be given some lands in Vieques, which is an offshore island, and they needed somebody to be the writer for the management plan of that island. Now, I'm not the, the biologist. I was what they call the technical writer. So all of you would give me information and I would put it together. And then I had to get a map. So I had to get somebody to do that map and so forth and so on. So because they knew me, they knew I was bilingual and they knew my background, <clears throat> I was able to get that and work on that management plan. And this pays, by the way, paid well. Um, I was able to build myself as an interpretive and environmental education consultant, which I was. 
and I gave some trainings to people on customer service uh, specifically. And the other thing is that when I worked at the forest, we worked on, has anybody heard of Project Learning Tree? Maybe David, I don't know, or Miss uh, the teacher. Um, well, we did a, a Project Learning Tree. Um, I'm gonna call it, I forget how we call it. Baul is a, like a travel case, but it had the whole curriculum about tropical forests. So we did the first one and we did it, a, the first one, we did it in Spanish. So then that was something that I did while I was at work, right? And then I left, but at some point they needed somebody to translate it. So I am not a translator and that's quite a job. I must tell you that's not an easy job, <clears throat> but I did write it helping in Spanish and I could translate it in English. And then we had somebody help me uh, to clean it up my mother, I hate to say, but we had somebody, you know, we, we made sure it was correct or whatever, but I got paid for translating that, um, that thing. And at the time, might not seem like a lot now, but, you know, I was saying, listen, I don't know if I can do this or whatever. And they said, it pays, no, I'm sorry. That was the management plan. The management plan was the one that told me, said, oh, it pays $25 a page. Yes, I will translate. I will translate the book. Again, I had put it all together. So I was already a little bit ahead, but the other one, I didn't get paid as much, but I still did it. It was good experience. When I came to the States and this is, let me see. Does anybody have a question? I'm like talking, talking. I have like 10 more minutes, okay? Yeah. So. Then we moved to the States because my husband um, was out of work and we went, to, that's why also I was working by myself on my own. But um, we moved to the States because he got a really good offer. So we moved to the States. I'm with three kids. I know nobody here and uh, I didn't know what to do, but I knew that for the first year, I wanted to kind of make sure I knew where I lived. My kids were fine, whatever, let's get to. But at some point it says, I need to do something, but I don't know what. And, and um, what I ended up doing was I went to our local Department of the Environment here, which is a couple of miles away. And I called a person and I said, I know you can't give me a job, but would you be willing to sit with me and give me some recommendations? And the guy said, yeah, sure, come on over. So we talked again, you know, we had an hour or so of talk and, and he said, listen, if I hear of anything, but you can contact this, this, it was great. It was a nice thing, right? Well, he called me about a week later and he said, hey, I have to do a talk to the New Jersey environmental education team, um, teachers, uh, New Jersey environmental teachers education. I forget the name, but uh, he said, would you like to present something? You could do a presentation, whatever you want. And I said, yeah, sure, why not? So I did a presentation on environmental issues in Puerto Rico. And at the end of the presentation, I literally went and said, now I'm here and I'm looking for a part-time job. And here's my resume. I have copies of my resume if anybody wants copies of my resumes. So after a talk, I did get a couple of people who took the resume and one of them called me the next day. And that person was the director of the Camden's Children's Garden which you can see, this is the Camden Children's Garden. Does anybody know where the Children's Garden is? Just nod if you do, right? It's right next to the aquarium in Camden. So um, they wanted me to do their, their education um, a program. So I did, you know, you learn. And one of the things that we learned, which was not that known at the time, was uh, distance learning. And this is what distance learning looks like or looked like, right? Now we have Zoom, we just do this. But this is the classroom that I'm taking care of. There's a camera that's facing me. And I had all sorts of things. It was really cool because I could put live animals. I always had worms or um, shells. I had all sorts of things. I had never done that before. That blew me away, but it was fun. So I did. I, I've worked on all sorts of things. 
but we did over 300 lessons in a year. And I had mostly in the nearby area, but I had students from all over the United States. And I even had some from Costa Rica, which was really kind of cool. So, and again, having me being bilingual was really something good because in Camden, there's a lot of Spanish speakers and um, being able to offer lessons in Spanish was a big deal because not over, not everybody uh, does that. So <clears throat> learn a language, a second language, it's important. Um, I took care of visitors, we would do activities, you know, so that was part of it. And um, nobody has a question, I'm gonna take a sip of water, just a sec. Questions? And I want to show you this because no, to me, again, my life was not linear whatsoever, okay? I had no idea that I would be in any of those places. It's something that I'm really glad I did. <clears throat> so then when I needed a change, I started looking and say, hey, where would I work if I had another opportunity? Because I miss the interaction of people. Being in a classroom, you know, watching people on TV and then never seeing them again, kind of, that's not what I wanted to do. I did enjoy having visitors, but I wanted a little bit of more of a relationship. But I'm not a full-time teacher. I'm an informal educator. So I wasn't looking for classroom work and I wasn't prepared for that. But I looked up and I saw that the Academy of Natural Sciences, the oldest natural history museum in the nation in Philadelphia was looking for uh, a program um, manager. And it's like, wow, that would be a really fun place to look at. So I checked the application and I'm gonna tell you that the truth is even though it was very formalized, it almost seemed to be like, um, a glorified Girl Scout troop. That's how I can, was looking at it. And I was a Girl Scout leader for many years. So it's like, I can do that. So I applied and uh, I was lucky enough to get this job. And this job is, I had for 11 years, actually, like David said, I've been a year here uh, with PEF. But at this one, I was in charge of high school girls from the Philadelphia School District. Um, that can stay with the program for four years. They have to start as rising freshmen though. And uh, so I would have about 70 girls in two different programs. The ninth graders was one and then 10th, 11th, 12th was another. So for them, it required classroom lessons. We did a lot of um, um, trips to different places depending on the theme. And this is all environmental, of course. The program was called Women in Natural Sciences. We would do all sorts of things with the scientists. We were collecting here one of the streams, eels. We were doing a study on eels. Uh, we did internships. I had to make connections with different people. And this was with the USDA for the uh, young ladies to have internships with them. Um, and one of the things that I'm gonna say is that on all these trips, on all these jobs, I've been able to travel. But the mo this one, the winds was the one that we traveled the most. And these are some opportunities that came to us, but some of them we made happen. So I got as internships, I got to take the girls to Montana. We would go to all sorts of places in the tri-state area. This is in the Poconos. Um, we were doing um, kayaking, canoeing and rafting, um, studying the river. I got to go to Mongolia, taking a group of young women in an interchange with other students from Mongolia. We got to go the next year to Costa Rica to study um, climate change. This one was climate change, the one in Mongolia, as it has to do with culture and water. And this one was uh, climate change as it has to do with food and, and diversity. And then this, it actually was in 2020 when I went, it was before, but we got to go, I got to go to Tokyo to do a presentation. Uh, my boss knee got hurt and so she couldn't go and I had to do the presentation for her, but my two students were coming with us anyway. 
So we had that opportunity. I was kind of like the chaperone. I ended up being the presenter, but the two students presented also. This was their advertisement for the games that was supposed to be on 2020 when we got there. So let me see what else I have. And then now I'm here at the Philadelphia Education Fund. And I started in February. And of course we all went in lockdown in March, but I was able to, we did have a couple of meetings that were um, um, in person. I got to go to Texas before we closed up. But right now, of course, as you all know, we're doing everything Zoom. I feel like my wings have been clipped, but I wanted to try something new after 11 years with the wins, which was awesome. I'm a believer of new blood, not only for the program, but for oneself, for new opportunities. And when this was coming around, this was like, <clears throat> when this opportunity came up for being the, I am now the manager of the Philadelphia STEM ecosystem, it was like, this is a great opportunity. I should try to try to do this. And I was able to do it. So um, try something new. I've been working, I, I work on the website. We started a directory. I had to work with planners. And so again, I'm doing a lot of something new and it's just been a really awesome voyage. So again, the reason I showed you all these is because this, this has been, my adventure and I love all the spaces that I've been to but I really mean it when I say this nothing I learned was wasted I have so I started with a couple of jobs and now I ended up with a career in education in formal education and in, in the environmental sciences <clears throat> but everything I did even outside the school I use I have used somehow so I, I hope that you see this as something, oh, this is my, my email. If you have any questions, if you just wanna chat, if you just say, listen, how did you get to do this? Or anything else, please feel free to contact me because obviously, as you see, I have no problem talking and uh, I like to share stories. Any questions? Thank you, Betsy, very much. What an intriguing story, um, your, your journey. And I think this is something that we tried to stress to the students um, over and over again, is that you might have a preconceived idea of what your, what your professional path is going to look like, but more than likely, um, you know, it's gonna have a lot of twists and turns in it. So um, I welcome, or I'm gonna open the floor and welcome any questions from from the girls, Let me, are, are you seeing the chat box? Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, ladies. Uh, yeah, I was wondering, speaking of the pictures that Becca said, how did you get anything done when you had that view on top of the lighthouse? Oh, my goodness. I'm gonna tell you one of the advantages was because we kept aquariums and we had a touch tank also. We, we were very, um, how do you say, careful with our animals. And we didn't wanna give them too much stress. And a touch tank, you're gonna get stress. But it was something that it's okay, we would take a sea cucumber or something or a sea star, we'd have it and then we'd put it back in the water. And then, but if the day was beautiful, it was like, oh, don't we need to change our sea star? Let's go snorkeling and find a new one. So um, I did have those moments. But I tell you, they kept me busy otherwise. We had a lot of visitors. We opened five days a week, but I had uh, employees seven days a week. Um, you know, and I got, and, and in these projects specifically, actually the, the lighthouse um, and the forest, I was able to get in on the bottom floor where they were still even planning what was going on, which was a really great place to be because you learn so much. You know, so I learned about the history of the lighthouse. And when you're gonna, re because it, the lighthouse was restored, you can't just go to the Home Depot and buy just anything. You need to get, you know, uh, the right metal and the right shape of the stuff that was used at the time. You can't just use any paint. You have to use such and such paint. So um, there was a lot to learn and a lot to maintain, I must tell you. But yeah, I, 
I have another question that, that I was hoping you might touch on in the presentation. Gets back to my confusion when we first met. Um, what, where does Betsy come from? If that's a story you're able okay. to tell. So my given name is Susan Elizabeth Payne Negron. Because in Puerto Rico, we use two, line, two, two last names. Now, Susan Elizabeth, um, Elizabeth, one of the nicknames is Betsy. You can be Liz, Liza, Betty, whatever, Betsy. But since day one, and I'm not 100% sure why, my, my, everybody has called me Betsy. My parents call me Betsy, and that's how I was introduced. So I literally uh, don't answer to Susan unless I'm, you know, somebody goes, Susan, Susan, Susan. He said, oh, wait, they're talking to me, you know? So, um, but my given name, so I have to sign, you know, when I sign you know, papers, my house is under my name, not under Betsy, my legal name, I should say. Got it, got it. There's a question in the chat box. I can read it to you if you want. Um, sounds like you had some amazing experiences. Are you happy where you ended up? Yes, but I must tell you that it took some time. And, and you mean ended up as in with PEF? or in New Jersey, or both. I'm gonna tell you both. I had to move to New Jersey. When I, when I realized that I was gonna to have to leave Puerto Rico, I cried and I cried and my kids cried because I saw myself living forever in Puerto Rico, right? And Puerto Rico has a lot of issues, ladies. We're not, you know, to me it's paradise, but there's a lot of issues like any other place. Like Philly is awesome and it has a lot of issues, but that was my home. So I really, I cried mm -hmm. and it took me a little bit to get used to it. But I think that one year is a time like for work, for jobs, for different things. So it kind of, kind of takes about a year. And I think about the year's time, it was, you know, I, I got into a routine and then I started that work and I got to meet more people. And, you know, as, as you meet more people, literally, I didn't know nobody. I knew one friend of mine that lived, I'm, um, Voorhees, okay? So it was like, I don't know, 30 minutes away or something like that. So I did have a connection and and they're the ones who found out our house in a perfect place for me, for us, because I had three young kids, right? So I wanted good school district and I had no idea about how these things worked. So it took me a little bit. Um, I miss my tropical weather. I'm gonna tell you that if I could, I'd be in Puerto Rico. But I am also very grateful of all the opportunities that we've had here and some of these magnificent opportunities and jobs and that I've had. I was telling my mom about this presentation. And when I, I was telling her, because my mom lives with me now, um, I said, you know, I just realized that in the last, I'm going to age me here, let me see, 20 years, right, even from when I was in Puerto Rico, I have not had to pay for one trip except my visits to Puerto Rico. I've been to Mongolia, I've been to Japan, Costa Rica. I've been to like, I don't know, 10, 15 states in the United States. And it's been all through work and work opportunities. But literally, I people say, we have an opportunity, and actually this happened, um, we have an opportunity to do a presentation at the Bahamas, it's like, I'll go. I had no idea what the presentation was, what it was, but I decided, and sorry about that. Um, I decided, said, Bahamas, I'm going. Nobody else raised their hand. I got to go to the Bahamas. And literally I had to, um, it was for the forest, it was representing the forest service, but it was Puerto Rico tourism. Wait. Sorry guys, um, it was Puerto Rico tourism representation at a Bahamas uh, thing. So I had to actually be in my uniform by a table for a few hours during the day, right? Well, I don't know, six hours for a couple of days. But then they took us to the hotels, they gave us, showed us, they, you know, whatever. I got to go to the Bahamas, it was awesome. So, but basically again, jump first, then ask how high because you never know what the opportunity lies. Great advice. Any plans to go back to Puerto Rico? Like uh, to live, like if you could? 
Well, you know, if I could, uh, yes, um, we would love to. I don't know if that's where I'm going to retire, you know, life. I kind of realize that sometimes the best laid plans is not what ends up happening. So yes, I would like to see that, but who knows what's going to happen. So at the moment, I am I know that I have at least a few more years here. And as for work-wise, do I like where I ended up? Yes. It turns out that the person, yeah. my new boss, uh, Nancy Peter, I've worked with her for long before at the Carver Science Fair and other things that have to do with STEM. But she happened to have been the first manager of that WINS program that I ran. So I knew her already. You know, when you have a new boss or a new teacher, it takes a minute to get used to it. Yeah, um, how about I get you something different? Sorry, this Hannah. Uh, so I just, um, just muted her. Yeah. But again, yes, I am. This is, again, I'm starting a new project. I'm working on a new initiative, which is the Philadelphia STEM Equity Collective, which David is part of. And we're actually putting it out. You know, it's something that was started. And literally the reason I have this job is because of the collective. This is one of the things they needed somebody to kind of manage the project, even though it's going to be run by the people in the collective, you always need to have somebody that has all the information in one place. So yes, um, it's a little uncomfortable sometimes because it's like, is, am I doing this right? Is this what's supposed to be? You know, because um, it's a new thing, but you know, I'm learning on my way. I think uh, we got a good handle, but the other thing is if something's going wrong, you have to accept it and learn from your mistakes, but um, so yes, I'm happy to where I'm at. I do miss working with my young ladies though. I really like, you know, you're, you're the people I've worked with in a long time, high school, young women. So I miss that. Do any of the any, uh, students have any other questions? No. No? Okay, well then. Uh, ladies, thank you so much for having me. And like I say, uh, and David, please share the, the email if they want to, if you have any question or maybe like, you know, it can be a personal question. I don't care. I'll get back to you. Okay. Thanks, Betsy. Okay, I'll, well, a round of applause because it snaps, whatever we do. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Everybody types chat. Thank you in the chat. Thank you, Betsy, very much for your time today. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Right, bye, students. Have a great week.